happen. There we go. Hello, Anne. Thanks again for coming back again to uh, Out on the Loom with Gabby Allen. Today, I am incredibly delighted and super excited to have Rachel Miles on. Um, we're going to talk to her about, you know, how things work. And um, she has amazing books. So I hope that you will really enjoy the chatter that we have, because I tell you right now, if you get it out in under four hours, you're going to be really lucky. So, so here's Rachel. And Rachel, what is it that you do? And how do you do it? Let's go. All right. So I write, um, re I publish <laughs> historical romance. Yes. But when you pick up one of my books, it's really a historical mystery with kissing. I love that so much. I, I really do. I am a huge fan of, of your books and I love Regencies and, you know, like I love the historicals and I love, um, you know, that everything is about the season and Ton and all that kind of stuff. But yours has like that extra, like you said, the, the mystery with the kissing that I'm like, tell me more. When is your next book coming out? So what led you to want to put the mystery in? Um, so it has to do with how I came about writing. Oh, I'm here for the story. Let's go. <laughs> okay, it's for the story. So um, I used to be a college professor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a university administrator. College Very professors nice. is sort of more fun because <laughs> um, you have, <laughs> you know, yeah. And and they um, they say. It's like that TV show, kids say the darndest things, yeah. that never changes, okay? <laughs> I so love it. I was teaching a course called History of the Book, mm -hmm. and we started with papyrus and ancient writing systems, we came up to the present. And so my research area, if, if you kind of can't tell from the books, is 19th century women writers and the book trade. Very cool. So, I wanted a person who made money from their writing to talk to my class, yes. but I was in the wilds of West Texas. <laughs> and so I contacted all of the associations, romance writers, Western writers, sci-fi writers. And, you know, do you have anyone who can come to my class? for right. free? <laughs> Cause <laughs> I of course, also had no budget. So, um, I get an email. The reline says romance writer reporting in. Oh, and it's uh, I love Debbie it. Thomas, who is I know, nice. been on the New York Times list twenty five times, and she's going to come talk to my students love for it. free. Wow! So after um, after she spoke. I took her to lunch, which really is the least you can do. And I took a couple of students who I know wanted to write romance. Okay. And I mean, talk about how fun they're getting to have oh, lunch yeah. with the New York Times bestseller. Oh, you know, yeah. Right. So at the end did of you so did you let her get anything on the menu or were you like, look, this is where the budget comes in. I'm gonna need you to stick you to like the buffet. The <laughs> no, no, I, I I let her buy anything you she can wanted. Have you can get the soup and the half a sandwich. I cannot afford the whole sandwich. I'm sorry. Right. right. Um, you know, that's why we're at a hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so, I would have to tell her that. <laughs> so at the end of lunch, she looked at me and said, so honey, what are you going to write? Oh. And, and we all know that there can be some kind of class bias between genres right. mm -hmm. and I did not want to be that person yes. um so I I tried to say really I said well you know after I get tenure I've always thought I would write a mystery and she patted my arm and she said oh honey <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what my agent told me years ago if you write a mystery, you'll sell thousands of copies. Mm -hmm. If you write a romance, you'll sell tens of thousands of copies. Yes. And not being stupid, I said, 
I guess it's going to be a romance, <laughs> um, which is is kind of how it happened. And there she also go. taught a class in about two hours away. Mm-hmm. She taught a continuing ed class in the oh. business of of genre fiction. Very cool. So to take her class, you had to have a certain amount of a book. <laughs> and since she told me you need to write a romance. I, I felt like it would be really rude if I showed up with a mystery. <laughs> You're so, like, Here, um, here's my mystery. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's how that sort of um, lean took place. Okay. But I can't not think about complicated plots and apparently yeah. how to kill people. Right. I, Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's so, I don't know what I really like. Sometimes I worry about my poor little brain because I'm like, what is it about you that really just wants to do Kill away people. with me? <laughs> I mean, that, that's a little, you know, a little much sometimes. But you know what? The thing is, is I think with the killing people, part of the lure for that uh, for me is the justice aspect because you're not yes. going to do that without it's one of the reasons that i i have um i've tried before to think about like do i could i write a thriller and i'm like i yes, have to have the full on justice at the end whether that's with a mystery a cozy mystery a historical with romance that, that involves kissing and history and mystery like it has to end with the bad person being uh, there has to be justice like and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know a court battle or uh i i just want to i want the reader to know that we caught him and now he's gonna go down for this and and i i think that there's a lot to um there's a lot to recommend writing a mystery and things because seriously, if your kissing part gets boring, you just kill somebody. (laughs) Absolutely true. You know, I actually toted up how many people, (laughs) I had one book where the plot was um, uh, grave robbing. Oh, I actually toted up how many dead bodies were in the book. (laughs) Yes, impressive. A lot. It was it was near thirty. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, like they they didn't all die in the I, book. Yes, some were dead in advance of right. the book beginning. But right, there were a lot of of, of bodies. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I was actually at a there's a there's a huge. Fair Day, I guess, is what you would call it here in Mechanicsburg, and it's called Jubilee Day, and we are the biggest one-day festival on the East Coast. Um, we have 60,000 extra people come into a town that is literally like uh, maybe 12,000 or so, so there's a huge influx. And so I was, I was signing in front of the funeral home and a cop stopped by and he's like, how's it going? And I was like, good. And he's like, so what do you write? And I was like, oh, well, I write about killing people. And he's like, what? I said, they're mysteries. And he's like, oh, I said, yeah, I really do like to kill people on the page. Oh my gosh. <laughs> on the page. I'm sorry. Like, just, just want to clarify. I'm not, I don't want anybody coming after me. If somebody gets hurt in town I do not want to be the first one that you look at I'm just just saying on the page but there is a <clears throat> there's a certain uh extra level I guess that you because I enjoy reading well I'm reading I'm wearing my shirt smart women I love romance, it I write it so I love the romance aspect but I do like something more um I do like that extra something that it like pulls me in like I definitely want the characters I want the growth I want um, I want the setting and all of that, but if you can then also effectively trick me into not knowing who killed who, I d- I'm on board, like totally on board. <laughs> so how do you write? 
like do you do you start out with an idea for the mystery and then build in the romance do you start with the romance and build in the mystery yeah i'm assuming you do some research (laughs) yes to everything yes um well and and i should say that i am not in in my office because i love what's behind you Um, (laughs) my my Yodas and my, yes, cause my, great. Uh, <laughs> my magic eight balls. <laughs> yes, we're actually um, on vacation visiting my in-laws. So this is oh, my other in laws cool. office. But if we were in my office, I have all this stuff that I could hold up and say, I do this and <laughs> I do that. Um, I love it. it. <laughs> so um, what is her name? Oh, I can see her face. Um, it happened. I know. <laughs> Tamson, Tamson. Oh gosh, she's she it'll has, come to you. It'll come to me in a minute. Yeah. yeah well. She has this term that is neither plotter nor pantser. Okay. Quilter. Which oh. is someone who writes a bunch of scenes and then quilts them together. Okay. And I tend to be a quilter. Um, you know, if I get stuck in a scene, mm-hmm. I'll just hop on to another scene that I'm, I think I'm going to write, or if I'm writing a scene and I have an idea uh-huh. in that scene, but I realize it's, you know, it doesn't go here. I may stop and go write the other one. Okay. Um, so we need to talk a little bit about that because I have never been able to do that. I am a very, very linear writer. I have to start at the beginning. I have to write all the way through. One of the reasons is, especially with a mystery, like I know that there are going to be red herrings, but certain things build. So (laughs) how do you, like, when you say you're a quilter, what I'm thinking of is you're writing like this much of the scene, and then you're going to have to do a transition in and a transition out. So is that, is that your whatever the word is for putting the pieces together for piecing together the quilt right so I I have a scene and I know the order of the scenes okay um but you know one of the things about writing scenes well maybe that you don't know because you write in a straight line Ah, yeah is that sometimes there's a conversation that they're having yes that they could have as chapter three or as chapter 30 but what matters is the tags okay. and the other stuff, you know, huh. how right. they interreact, interrelating to one another, what their yes. reactions are, will be very different if that conversation is having er, happening early in the book than if it's oh. happening late in the book. I had not thought about that, actually, because I am so I linear. Just- I tend to write like this conversation couldn't happen anywhere but here. But now you're making my little, my poor little brain is whirling, Rachel. <laughs> like, hmm, no, I do get that. Because sometimes I do get stuck and I'll sit there for, you know, a whole day. And I'm like, God, why can't I, what, am, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? What, what comes next? And there's a part of me that would love to just write what's in my head throw it off to the side and then go on to the next one just knowing that eventually I'll be able to piece them all together so so when you're doing that let's say for instance that you're writing an extra piece or you're writing a piece that you know is not exactly where you're at do you throw it into a different document do you put it towards the end of the manuscript so you can find it again so I use Scrivener, which I'm oh. sure everybody says to you, I okay. use Scrivener, which is wonderful because it allows you to create and name scenes. Yes. And then when you want to move that scene around, yes. and I really think, um, I have a weird brain for this. No. I no. really <laughs> think in terms of acts. And yes. so if I have a hundred thousand word book, that's four acts. Each act is then, you know, math, 25,000 words. Oh, no, mathing. <laughs> I know it's terrible. It's but, okay. you know, I know that I want an arc in mm-hmm. each of the acts and that the arc needs to have higher stakes. Yes. 
you know, the the stake in Act One is different than the stakes in two and three. Absolutely. And so I do kind of look at things and go, okay, given the arc of of this act, that scene that I thought was going to be in here, that that's going to have to go somewhere else. And then I ask myself, do I really need that scene? Can I repurpose it by changing the tags? But what would be happening? You know, like what are, what are the stakes in that scene that would make it something I keep? But I I heard Joe Beverly once say that she wrote, wrote, four words for everyone that ended up in the book <laughs> and at the time I thought oh my god how inefficient oh. and I started <laughs> looking at the way I write and and honestly yeah. um yeah I, yeah I write a lot more words than I actually use I got you okay well I mean and that's <clears throat> as we talked off camera shortly before we got started I really want people to realize how many different ways there are to do this. And that even if it's, let's say that they have other writer friends that, you know, they meet at a coffee shop, you know, on Tuesdays and and no one has really published yet, or the person who has published does it a certain way and says, you know, well, then you might want to do it this way. And they feel out of flux because they're they're not doing it that way that must mean that they're doing it wrong and and I don't I want to the reason that I'm asking you about this is that it's not something that I do therefore I am not familiar with how to tell someone how to make that work for you and and so I love that you do it differently I love that it's it's a a way that is not something that's in my toolbox because that way like I said I can ask you my questions and hopefully inspire someone else to think oh I I write out an order too so that's not a bad thing like there are a lot of people if you're if you're wet if your net is not wide or if you do not have a ton of people, or you do not belong to a writer's association, it's possible to feel like you're the only one who does this. And that's the reason why it's not working. And so if I can, if I can show somebody and say, Hey, right here, that's, it does work. (laughs) You just have to work at it. Then, then that's good. And at the end, I'll ask, um, if anybody has any questions that they can throw them down in the bottom um, in okay. the comment section. And, and so if, you know, if anybody does come up with something, then maybe we can, you know, start a conversation with that too. And so when you're quilting, do you, so you name your scenes mm-hmm. um, just by like kind of what's happening in them so that you know which one to grab. Yeah. Okay interesting i and, love it and so i you but you asked how i start a book yes yeah, sorry um <laughs> no, i usually start I got a soft track <laughs> a character and a problem okay okay so and then and you know then it's like okay well how do we work this problem out and what obstacles yeah. is this person gonna face given their character right in in right. solving this problem so when you say character there's a couple of different ways and and because i really hope that we have some readers that are are listening also when you say character you mean as a whole so sometimes people mean like okay i have a name i know what she looks like and i think that this might kind of be what her family is do you when you're saying character do you already kind of have them figured out as to who they are at the core or do you figure that out as you're writing can i i, I hate to keep saying both no yeah no. you, know, kind of little, <laughs> you um, are allowed to say both that's a perfectly valid response <laughs> you know um in book one i knew she was a widow okay and then she had a child okay and that um she had been not high born so you know gentry Mm -hmm. and that her husband dies and leaves her as uh the joint guardian of her son with a man with whom who she hates ah okay i see what you're saying 
what do you do when you've been left in that situation and you have to somehow manage a guardianship with right. someone you hate, which of course that was a, an enemies to lovers. You know? uh, that's uh, actually, that's one of my favorite tropes. I, I, I really do enjoy the enemies to lovers because I feel like, especially if you're writing a romance, there's a whole slew of issues in that right off the bat. And and you definitely don't want them to be able to get together too quickly. And so you're going to continue to put things in their way. And, and no, that's, that's one of my, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. so, and, you know, in, in another one of my books, uh, I had a woman who had been virtually abandoned. Her yeah. husband went off to war and yep. never came back. Yep. And so she figures out a way in 1820 to get a divorce yes I and love so that. how is that gonna work out how's yes. he gonna respond so I very often start with some sort of complicated situation right and and, and a and an idea of a character who would be in that situation and but did certainly I learn about the characters as I go along okay and I'll be writing I'll go I I had no idea <laughs> she had a dead brother who died of diphtheria when she was three. You know, <laughs> it's like, thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> right. I do appreciate if you could fill that out on your resume ahead of time next time. That would be great. So, right. I mean, you know, you have to go back and you have to write <laughs> in the little, the little, um, I call well, them tags, the little yes. things that set up that she does have a dead brother. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So then, <laughs> because sometimes the characters take over and it's, that's just how it is. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I need you back over here. And they're like, no, 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 no. Just ride with me for a moment. If you'll ride with me for a moment, I can show you exactly what you really, really want versus mm -hmm. what you thought you wanted. So just hang, hang tight for a sec. So in doing that, um, like do the characters kind of come that there's a there's a there's a bunch of different ways that people talk about how they do characters are you searching for a way to complicate someone first or does the character kind of walk in and say hey there I just wanted to let you know that I'm your next book and I'm a widow and I have a kid and you say, ooh, now what would be the worst thing that could happen to a widow with a kid? What if I give her a guardian who she hates? And so is that, do you do both? Which is fine. <laughs> that's going to be our word for the day is both. And that's yeah, both is our word for the day. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when you go into a series. Yes. Now there so is that. One of the things I loved about Joe Beverly's books was how, you know, because when I, started doing this being an academic I had a research closet of romance novels of course you did <laughs> and of course I did I still do um <laughs> not surprising a little note to like really good sex scene here um, <laughs> this and, emulation this not so much this one yeah. absolutely <laughs> okay yeah. when you need help you you yeah. go to the shelf and it's like why not these are good fights. These yeah. are, yeah. And so, you know, you know, one of the things that Joe Beverly did was, and I was really lucky to get to meet her oh. and have a conversation and chat with her at a oh party my gosh. before she died. And so I got wow. to, you know, talk to her about this. Yes. And I said, you know, I love that, you know, in book one, there'll be a moment where a character comes up and they're talking and they get pulled away. Yes. They're not the main story. The main story is who they're talking to. Yes. And the story just continues. But in book two, it's the guy who got pulled away. Yes. And you find out where they went. And I said, you know, I love this about your books. And it turned out she was a pantser. She did really not fly. You could not tell. Oh, wow. That's pretty flawless because I mean, her work is uh, amazing. You would think um, beautifully plotted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Something that was very methodical and like she knew, 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 knew. 
that's fascinating that she was not necessarily into that interesting well and that's again i am not a pantser i if i if i pants i have so many rabbit trails that i'm like well that didn't go anywhere and that didn't go anywhere and i don't like where that went and i'm not going to use that and then i i find myself not necessarily getting being able to get back to the story um and for me with a cozy mystery because i tend to know who i'm killing from the beginning i most of the time i know who has killed them and so i kind of work backwards um and i mean we've done you I, th I think you were in the mind mapping class oh yeah well, yeah and so like i tend to okay who's dead why are they dead where are they dead how are they dead why would somebody want who's the person who wants to kill them so i don't uh, suze brock suzanne brockman i've heard does a 50 page synopsis Oh no, there's no way. I just that's way too much information. But I do need to have like three or four pages of like paragraphs of things that I would like to see happen. I don't want to nail myself to it because if something comes up and a character's like psh, 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 come over this way, I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if I have lost the plot, then I do have a document that I say, oh, right, I wanted to do that next. So I need to build my way up to that. So as you're a quilter, do you do you have like some idea of your acts when you're going in? Mm -hmm. OK, and do you like write that down? Is that part of the I know they have like oh, yeah. little note cards. In yeah, no, I, have, here. I have a synopsis. OK. Uh, and you know i make stuff up at the beginning right. um, of what i think is going to happen yeah and i think you know i've uh, taken a couple of you know online classes with madeline hunter oh oh i i she is the one who took she and joanna Lindsay are the two that i started out with and jude Devereaux, and mm -hmm. Um, by the time I got to Madeline Hunter, I was like, oh my, God. her women are so freaking smart. And I love that they're so smart, which I think is one of the reasons when I met you up in Canada and I started reading your stuff, I was like, oh, oh yay, another one, because you have very smart heroines. You, you don't rely on them just being in a ton, which I, again, I love those books, but I do like something a little different sometimes too and so i very much enjoy what you do with your heroines totally got us <laughs> off track on that <laughs> well and and you know i love your books and i feel thank like you. i know awesome. mechanicsville from <laughs> Callie because she yeah. had this wonderful description of here's the river and this is how it runs through town and here she lives <laughs> over there yeah. it, i feel like i could come to town and use your books like as a map probably, um, <laughs> I probably could, right um, <laughs> So, um, so you took classes from Madeline Hunter. That's where we were at. I'm sorry. I did. This was a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when RWA still did the, you know, the email classes. Yes. Where you yes. get a lesson and then you could do it. And, I love those. And I loved those. And I, I thought it was a real loss when they yes. moved to just Zooms. Uh, uh, yeah. And so, uh, but you know it is what it is i understand learn differently and i learned really well in that other format yes and so you know madeline talks a lot about conflict oh, yeah. and you know what sorts of conflicts are fruitful and what sorts of conflicts aren't right and so you know i do think very actively like what are my blocking actions okay you know and i i taught trauma for years part of okay. my dissertation was about shakespeare oh, so, yeah you know, i've thought about you know play structure yes and so you know i do think about this as a primary block this is a secondary right. block um you know and and where is my really big can we get over it maybe not block you know the, that dark moment where you really have to feel like 
the characters may not be able to come out of this. Right. Like, how are they going to be able to do that? Because I don't see a solution that's going to work. But then you, you do that and you take us to the brink and then you do solve it. And I'm like, oh, you sneaky, sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. I would not have thought of that. I, I maybe, maybe if I had been forced to think of it, I would have, but your, your books are very seamless in that I'm not trying to figure it out on my own because I know that you're going to take me on the ride and I'm waiting for it. And I'm waiting breathlessly. <laughs> Daniel, my husband, when, <laughs> when he sees me holding a book with your name on it, he's like, oh my God. So nothing's going to get done until that book's done. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's such a compliment. Thank you, Daniel. Absolutely. Um, I'll let him know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I love that. Um, I hope that's the case. Yeah. I, I want, you know, the world to feel real. Yes. Um, yeah. And I do, you know, all sorts of crazy research. Oh, I bet. Um, how do you so I, I, how do you keep yourself from throwing every single thing that you've researched in though so that's another thing i i tend to like surface research certain things and then i make up the rest but in like if you're going to research a specific kind of like someone who's making money off of i or, i mean that was for a class sorry um but if you're going to research something specific like guardianship um within that particular time period are you looking for specific things or do you read the whole thing and then you just have to hold yourself ba back from saying and then and then and then because you are so excited about the research so um i come to it with a certain sort of base of knowledge of the period okay because you know i taught it for years right but Certainly, writing romance changed the way I taught mm -hmm. because you know Wordsworth is just such a prig, um, <laughs> and then you have to wonder after your after your writing period pieces for a while is like was it because he had bad shoes <laughs> walking <laughs> everywhere? Maybe his feet hurt, and that's why he's you know possible pompous. Um, I adore you. I, I just, <laughs> I just do. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love. Go ahead. I'm so glad that we met. Yeah. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> we both were giving papers at um, the Toronto Romance Women's Writers Association. Yeah. Yes. And we didn't know each other, okay. and we ended up in each other's sessions, and yeah. then we sort of gravitated to the same table. Yeah. And then we stayed at the same table for yes. three days. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's, and then that's the how next that works. we went back and did it again and and we so, had fabulous lunch together oh, and, we did. Yeah, yeah yeah i just so, i can't seem to yeah it's probably better was, that you don't live closer because we'd be my, in trouble. probably I, yeah I'm, I'm gonna so <laughs> i was talking about um pacing and yes. editing and then the next year I talked about mindfulness and yes. rafting and you were talking about mind mapping in the first year you did how to put romance into your mystery. Yes, I did. Yes, I so did. Those were both very interesting and profitable for me to listen. Absolutely. To. Oh, well, so. and, and the same goes. I mean, it was very, it was very intriguing to look at it from a different perspective because I, I don't <clears throat> do historical. And I, I, because I know for certain that I would get so hung up on, is it a purse? Is it a police? Is it a, am I saying that wrong? Am I like, do, what kind of like they're okay. They have to be on something with wheels. All my people would probably ride horses because I'd be like, is, is that a, is, how do you say the, I'm going to say it wrong. It, I always look at it and I read it as curly Q, which is not, not right. And I know that. Is it a, cur a, a curricle? Curricle. Okay. I think, you know, we could both be American. Oh, well, what? Uh, <laughs> it's very so, oh, it's so funny because I have a, one of my heroines. So the, the person who reads um, my novels is yes. British and she's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. And it's wonder. I can even listen to her. I, you yeah. know, like 
pod. I'm never going to be able to listen to them. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. And, you know, just, but my husband's like, no, no, we've got to at least try. Right. Yeah. I could forget I wrote the book because she oh. made it sound like the sentences didn't sound like me saying them right. anymore, that they were in a British accent. Yes. Well, it makes a difference. <laughs> well, and with different cadences. Yes. Yes. Um, so absolutely. I have a, a, char- a character who I, in my head, she's Emmeline. Oh, but she is Emily. Interesting. Okay. Which, so then which, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, let me rearrange my brain. Right. Because like you're- now I know. Didn't didn't realize that. But the funniest part. So I have a I have a subscription uh, to the Oxford English Dictionary. Okay. So I actually look words that I have questions about up. Right. And the fun part is when I get, when I've looked the words up and I've made sure that the thing about the Oxford English Dictionary is the definitions are dated. Oh. And they will tell you U.S. or British. Huh. So it's often very interesting to go in. I have a word I want to use. And it's like, oh, can't. That's U.S. (laughs) usage. Um, Oh, now that I hadn't even thought of, like, because I wondered before, like there, you know, like we say jumper means something different there than it does here. And I had thought about, you know, oh my gosh, like I, I would get so lost, but I, I had never thought about using a dictionary that dates and classifies where that particular word. Yeah. Now I might just have to go get myself a subscription just because just because that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> it, it, it actually is a lot of fun. And um, so what's fun was one time I used um, sidewalk. Oh. And I got a little note that said, we in Britain use pavement. And really? Uh-huh. And huh. not, and, and being polite, I did not write back in 1820. <laughs> I looked this up okay you in Britain did in in fact (laughs) (laughs) there's you know these also these interesting moments um where you discover that you can't use the words you want yes for example because I know all of you are desperate for an example I want examples Um, it doesn't matter (laughs) I want you can't be empathetic before Freud. Okay. You can't have empathy. Empathy is a Freudian concept. So you can do it in the Victorian age, but when I'm writing in 1820, they have to have sympathy or, um, you know, you come up with some other way to say not empathy, but you can't use empathy. So how do you choose? And uh, that is total nerd. Go ahead. I love I love nerd stuff. I love nerd. Bring it on. Bring, lots of it. Lots of it. Um, so like, but so how do I want to ask this? How do you choose what to look up? Like, I don't know that that would have struck me as something that would need to be looked at as like, I, I feel like I probably would have thought, of course, empathy has been around forever. I would look up like what scissors are and when they started being used, but maybe not concept. So is that something that you just do because that's how your brain works? Or are there like certain parameters that you look for, for somebody who's maybe trying to do something like this? Um, so first Mm -hmm. I've read a lot between okay. 1780 and 1840, because that's what yeah. I wrote my PhD in. Okay. And then I taught. Right. So there's a whole lot of vocabulary that I already know is appropriate because it's in a, a novel that I taught or a poem right. I taught or okay. something. But, you know, very often I'll just scribble down words that I have questions about. I love and it. And then that's something, you know, I can do in front of the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's like absolutely. let's look up words, and right. then I thought it'd be really fun to have um, a a feature. I, and I'm you're so good at social media, and I'm so <laughs> jealous. 
<laughs> but I thought it'd be fun to have words you could use in 1819. <laughs> um, but you can be in 1819 a star, which really? I did not expect. I would not have expected that at all. So you can oh, be a star. You can oh. be a star. Because um, I know, for, at least from things that I have read, and um, and this might just be my romance bias kind of stuff, they, they, they tended to, well, and also my documentary watching, because I love BBC documentaries on history, <clears throat> that they generally did not... Um, they didn't think that those people were worthy of that kind of thing. Like you could admire them, but you would not be somebody who necessarily interacted with them unless they were a really big one, which I guess would be star. Yeah. So celebrity culture is, you know, already, uh, if not fully emergent, if not fully established mm -hmm. is uh, successfully emerging at this period okay and so you may not want to emulate lord byron who right. you know the reputation is that he's mad oh. um and that's you know all from carolyn lamb who really was mad so it's hard yes. to figure out where the lines are there right. but um oh. and then you you know uh remember that the green wallpaper had arsenic in it <laughs> so and the Mad Hatter was because of the way they constructed them. And when you wore them, the, I can't remember what the, the, what was it? It wasn't Mercury. I thought it was Mercury. Was it Mercury? I, that was popping into my head. And I'm like, really, do you really think you remembered it that well? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it was um, so they put Mercury in it. And so it would seep into your skin. And then you would start going mad for people who did it all the time. <clears throat> but you that know, kind of stuff is fascinating. Yeah, I know it, it is fascinating. Yeah, and absolutely. if we think about, you know, things in our own built environment yes. that are probably also killing us. So <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, I was thinking more about pesticides. I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I love it. Well, we are coming close on time here. Oh gosh, I really? have to. I know, isn't it funny? It it's goes amazing. a whole lot faster than you think it would. I am. I'm going to throw something out there, and you and I can talk about this later. But I, I would bet that people would be very interested if you would come on and kind of talk about researching historicals and little sure. tips and facts and stuff like that. Because I know I want it. And quite frankly, if I do, there's got to be somebody else who does. So we will definitely talk about that because we'll I would love later. to have, yes, I would love to have you on to just kind of roll through kind of things that you know, things that you've used. That would be so much fun. Um, so That's at easy. this point, I'm going to ask you, where can we find you? What's coming up next? And how can we get in touch with you via social media? Okay, first, I have remembered Tamsin's last name. Uh, I knew you would. <laughs> Parker. Okay. And she writes sexy romance. Oh, all right. Like BDSM sexy. All right, yes. Um, yes. What's coming out next? Um, so if, if you're interested right now, y'all, um, I think think by the time this is put up it will still be the case that three of my ebooks are 99 cents so Ooh. go collect them yes um, yeah so uh the next thing coming out is uh, the novel I'm writing right now so there's going to be a lag it's called That's Wicked okay. in White I'm so what was it Wicked in White okay so the first three were ing words so mm -hmm. i had jolting the duke and chasing the heiress and by the time i got to tempting the earl i was sick of ing words oh. and so and i have two novellas with ing's and it's like why didn't uh -huh. anybody stop me and i kept thinking they're going to come up with a better title but no oh. <laughs> i decided that the next three that i wrote um were gonna be colors and then that's hard because Annalyn dies weren't developed. 
<laughs> until after the year I'm writing in. So I was trying to be alliterative and I wanted it to be a character trait. Right. It, so we have reckless in red, Ooh. brazen in blue, and then I ran out of colors that alliterated with words that actually existed. So now we have wicked in white. But I like that a lot. I, I, I'm I very drawn to that title. So I, I don't think there's any, I would not, if you had given me those three titles in a row, I would have been like, that's amazing. I would not have thought for a second, ooh, do you want to do Wicked and White? Because that doesn't really seem to, no, I, I would never have thought that. That is, it very much goes, I get that sometimes we're more critical of ourselves than other people are. And other people will hear something and they're like, that's brilliant. And you're like, mm, that's like average <laughs> at best. And they're like, no, it's brilliant. Listen to me. I'm not outside. I'm seeing it from somewhere else other than inside your head and I can tell you that it's brilliant so leave it <laughs> well good well because we're because I can come up with no other title for this <laughs> so that should come out sometime next year because awesome. I'm about 50k in okay so almost almost halfway awesome. um so that was the first question what am yes. I working on right after this there's going to be a mystery I've already bought the pen name and it's oh. going to be a, a, a not really a cozy, okay. but it's going to be sort of set in an academic environment. Oh. And she's an outsider who comes in and, and keeps running across people like goes into a lab and there's someone dead on the floor. So ah. um, it's so kind of an academic cozy. Maybe I am very I'm intrigued thinking. by that. Yeah. And the name is going to be... Uh, Anne Riverton. Oh, I like it. There's there's a, a pattern to how I do these. So anyway, I've already bought the name. So awesome. that's that's next. Um Yay. where can you buy things? Yes. Mm, Amazon Barnes and Noble, your local indie. Um okay. certainly the 99 cent deal is is at Amazon. Absolutely. And th so the you said there are three <clears throat> that are available for 99 cents right now. There are two okay. from the first three, which is, um, that's not true. The first book I published, um, mm -hmm. Jilting the Duke. Okay. That one's 99 cents. And then two from this series that oh. in white is the third, but I try really hard to write them as standalones. So it's sort of like in a play where you have a community, but different characters step forward at the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. So the reckless in red and brazen in blue are both 99 cents. Okay. I brazen will definitely. Blue is fun because it has a disabled heroine. Oh, I like it. So that's a, so, and they're, they're out there. Um, okay. What was the other question? Are you I, like, are you on Facebook? What's your email? I am on your Facebook. Website, that kind of thing. I have a, a website, rachelmiles.com. Okay. And now I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to remind everybody. I almost spelled the name wrong. It's R-A-C-H-A-E-L is the first name. Miles is M-I-L-E-S. I did not have the second A in there when I initially started this. So Make sure that you put in the second A in there so that you can find her stuff. Anyway, go ahead. No, it's okay. I I went for the old fashioned spelling, not even thinking that it, well, it's, it kind of looks pretty. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I hadn't realized, I don't, I've looked at your covers a thousand times. I don't know why I did not. Yeah, everybody um, does it. That. Everybody. <laughs> and, you know, so I get bloggers who do it and it's like, I hope they find the book. Um, my middle name, so Rachel is a version of my middle name. Oh, and so my middle name is Rochelle. Okay, and so Rachel with the extra, it, it just made it kind of look yeah. to me sort of similar. Yeah, no, um, it's very pretty. So, no criticism of those of you who don't use the A in your name. Your <laughs> name is pretty too. <laughs> no, but that matters because my name, I my, understand. Yeah, so, um. Yes, so I have a website. It's okay. kind of modest. Okay. Uh, I got hacked about a year and a half ago, and I've barely oh. tried to put it back together. And then I'm on Facebook. Um, yes. I believe I'm Rachel Miles' author. 
Okay. Okay. Well, I am going to, so just for anyone who's listening, I'm going to drop the links. This is not something that I've done before, before, before now. And I am definitely going to do that because I've had somebody ask, Hey, do you mind like giving us ways? Cause it's good to listen to you, but I don't always have a pen. And so I'm going to start putting the links down at the bottom. So you guys will be able to find things, but I just wanted to be able to let you also say it in case somebody just wanted to hear it so and you know i just sent you by links for yes. breaks and i need to send you the website so i'll do that i would love that i would love that so it's well this so much fun i know right <laughs> i love it i love it and thank you again so much for making time especially sure. during your visit to um to talk with me and uh, I hope that anyone who is listening has really enjoyed the information and a different perspective on how to write a book. Um, it's not something that I do. So I love being able to hear how it's accomplished. And, um, you know, as always, if anybody has any questions, please drop them at the bottom um, in the comments section. I will make sure that Rachel knows um, if there's anything in there for her to answer, and we will try our best to give you anything that we can to get you on the road to learning what you want to learn. So again, thank you so Thanks much, so Rachel. Much I, this me. was a blast. Absolutely. It was right. my pleasure. So we're going to sign off. Thank you so much for being here with um, Out on a Limb with Gabby Allen. And uh, I hope you have an amazing, amazing